Hi everyone, I'm Josh with Northern Frogger and this is the second installment of my species profile series and this episode is going to focus on the Dendrobates tinctorius powder blue. Okay, now this video is specifically going to be dealing about the Dendrobates tinctorius powder blue. Uh, but keep in mind that this care information is going to be pretty much the same for any of the tinctorius morphs. I'm excited about this one because uh, these powder blues are probably one of my favorite frogs, uh, in my collection at least. Um, uh, just kind of my personal preference leans towards uh, the bigger and bolder frogs and uh, these are one of the biggest and boldest of the dart frogs. Alright, so just a bit of background first. Um, like uh, most of the Tinctoria species, they originate from Suriname. And this particular morph is found in southwestern Suriname in the Dahan mountain region. And their natural habitat in the wild is kind of tropical rainforest areas and they're often found close to small streams or pools of water. And similar to the Leucomelis that I did my last species profile video on, the powder blues were one of the earliest uh, dart frogs to kind of come into the hobby in North America. Uh, seems the first imports were done uh, probably somewhere around 1994. And uh, they've kind of been a mainstay of the hobby ever since. So you'll see a few different frogs throughout this video and uh, you'll notice that they can have a fair bit of uh, variation in their patterns and colors. Um, they all kind of have a, a mainly black body and then they'll have kind of stripes uh, that can be solid or broken uh, running down their backs and these stripes can kind of range in color from a bright yellow to an almost white. And then uh, their stomach, sides and legs uh, which kind of give these frogs the name powder blue. Um, can kind of range from a bright blue color to a gray color um, and these will kind of be modeled with uh, varying amounts of black spotting. Some individuals will have very large spots and some have almost none. Uh, will actually have almost solid blue legs. And another quick note about the leg color. Um, I see there is a bit of confusion out there still. You will sometimes see frogs labeled as powder grays, um, but from everything that I can tell, um, it seems that the powder blues and powder grays um, are the same frogs, or at least they originate from the same wild population. And the difference in color um, is just down to natural variation. And uh, kind of from my personal experience, I can tell you that my original pair of powder blues are both a bit more on the gray side, I would say, but they've produced offspring that kind of run the gamut uh, from very gray to very bright blue. And I've even noticed quite a bit of variation from within the same clutch of eggs. And in terms of size, as I kind of mentioned before, uh, the powder blues are one of the largest of the darts. Uh, large females are capable of reaching about six centimeters or almost two and a half inches. Males will be a little smaller. Um, they usually top out around five centimeters or about two inches. And if you don't know how frogs are typically measured, uh, these measurements that I'm referring to are talking about the snout to vent length, um, which is basically the length from the tip of the nose to the cloacal opening at the base of the thighs. Uh, so these measurements do not include the legs. This is basically a body measurement. The females are larger than the males. Um, that's one of the ways that you can tell the difference between the sexes. Um, but aside from just being kind of larger overall, the females will have a more defined back arch. And the males tend to have wider toe pads than the females. But keep in mind that these differences only appear uh, once the frogs are approaching sexual maturity. Um, so they're virtually impossible to uh, determine sex visually until they are probably at least 10 months old. Um, the other way you can tell is that males are the only ones that call, um, but these guys have such a quiet call, uh, you're probably more likely to actually see a male calling than to hear them. So if you are thinking about frogs, um, but you're a little bit worried about the noise, if you live in an apartment or something, these guys are a great choice. In fact, probably any of the Tinctorius um, are a good choice if you're worried about noise levels uh, because they're so quiet, like you pretty much almost need to be inside the enclosure to actually hear them. 
Okay, so caring for the Powder Blues is going to be uh, very similar to any of the other Tinctorious morphs. Um, and in fact, most of the Dart Frogs are going to share kind of the same basic husbandry. Uh, so if you've already seen the Luca Malis, uh profile video, you'll probably notice a little bit of repetition here. Uh, powder Blues, like all the Dart Frogs, um, are going to do best if you keep them in a planted bioactive vivarium. And you're going to want to provide a minimum of 10 gallons per frog as adults. But bigger enclosures will be appreciated and they'll generally use all the space that you provide them. And when I talk about a bioactive vivarium, uh, I'm talking about something that's kind of seeded with microfauna such as springtails and isopods are the most common ones. Um, and these are going to provide kind of a secondary food source for your frogs. Um, but they're also going to play kind of an important role in helping to break down the frog waste and uh, other ways like dead flies, and dead leaves and stuff like that. And then they'll kind of help it uh, break down and turn into more fertilizer for the plants that are growing. And then uh, the plants in turn are going to grow and kind of provide cover and climbing areas for the frogs. Um, and they will also help increase and maintain humidity. Uh, so by having this kind of bioactive planted vivarium, uh, you kind of create a little mini uh, semi self-sustaining ecosystem. Uh, within the enclosure and this uh, really seems to be the way to make dart frogs most comfortable and uh, really observe their natural behaviors. Uh, like all dart frogs these guys need high humidity. You should try to keep it above 70% at all times. Um, I generally keep mine a little bit higher than that. I think most of my enclosures sit around 85% most of the time. And you can uh, achieve this high humidity by misting the vivarium as necessary. Um, you can also use the foggers and water features to help maintain humidity, uh, but I would still recommend a daily misting schedule. Um, if you can get some sort of an auto mister, uh, I would highly recommend those as well. And ideal temperatures for powder blues, uh, like most dart frogs, are going to be uh, right around room temperature. So if it's comfortable for you, it's probably going to be comfortable for your frogs. But ideally, you're going to be wanting to keep them somewhere in like the 20 to 25 degrees Celsius range, uh, which works out to about 68 to 77 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, so yeah, you're going to find that your house is going to fall within this range most of the time. Um, so you rarely will need to uh, do any additional heating for a powder blue tank. Um, in fact, if you live in a warm climate and uh, you don't have air conditioning, you may run into problems keeping dart frogs because temperatures above 30 degrees Celsius or about 85 degrees Fahrenheit uh, can be lethal very quickly. And uh, dart frogs seem to be perfectly fine with a bit of a temperature drop at night. I've heard uh, some people suggest that it may actually be beneficial to have a temperature drop at night uh, because that's kind of what they would experience in the wild. I'm not exactly sure how true that is or not, but I know most of my tanks do experience a drop of a few degrees at night uh, just because they warm up a bit once the lights turn on and uh, my house just tends to be a bit warmer during the day as well. And for feeding the powder blues, uh, their staple diet, just like uh, any dart frog, is going to be the flightless fruit flies. And the froglets and juveniles can be fed the melanogaster. Um, as they get a little bit older, you can switch them to the hydei flies. Um, and adults are probably best fed the hydei as their staple, uh, but they will take melanogaster as well. Uh, the adults can also take uh, pinhead crickets. Just be careful with feeding any dart frogs crickets, um, just to not overfeed and allow a bunch of crickets to escape into the vivarium uh, because they can quickly grow too big for the frogs. And uh, adult crickets can actually uh, kind of chew and chew on and injure your frogs. And uh, being one of the larger dart frogs, uh, I noticed the powder blues definitely have a large appetite to match. Um, out of all my frogs, I, the powder blues are probably the most aggressive feeders. Um, They'll often come hopping to the front of the vivarium um, as soon as I open the door uh, just because they're anticipating food and they're not shy about sitting right at the front of the glass and uh, hunting down flies as you watch them close up. And no matter what feeders you're using, remember that you should always uh, be dusting your feeders with a high quality vitamin and mineral supplement. And dart frogs in general are long-lived frogs and powder blues are no exception and they may live for up to 20 years if not more, um, if cared for properly. The powder blues are very bold and active frogs. Um, you can often see them hopping throughout the vivarium, hunting down flies. Um, they are definitely more on the terrestrial side, uh, so they'll do well in a horizontally oriented vivarium. Um, but that being said, they will climb as well. Um, if, you, if you provide them climbing space, they will use it. 
Uh, powder blues can be housed in groups as juveniles, but as they reach maturity, uh, the females will often become aggressive towards each other and you'll need to separate them. Uh, for this reason, many breeders, uh, including myself, we usually recommend keeping powder blues in male-female pairs uh, once they reach adulthood. I've heard of some people having success keeping two males and a female together, um, but I've tried that before and any time I've tried it, uh, the female just ends up being very aggressive to both males um, and I've ended up having to separate one of the males out. I've also heard that all male groups can work, um, but I've never really tried that myself. Um, so just be aware that if you are getting a group of juveniles, keep a close eye on them as they're approaching adulthood. Um, so at somewhere around 10 months of age, you should really start watching out for aggression. Even if they've been fine up until that point, um, the group dynamic will often change uh, once they do kind of start hitting maturity there. The other thing to be aware of uh, when you're watching, you may not see any outright aggression. Uh, but you may notice some of the frogs seem a lot more outgoing than others. Some will be very bold, you'll see them all the time, while others might spend most of their time hiding. Um, and this could be a sign that those hiding ones have been bullied um, and have kind of become the sub subordinate frogs in the tank and are just kind of trying to stay out of the way of the dominant frogs um, in order to avoid being bullied even more. So keep a close eye out at feeding time. Um, powder blues should be very bold and voracious feeders, as I've mentioned before. So uh, when you're feeding a group, you should expect all of them to come out and really start actively hunting down flies. Uh, but if you notice some of them kind of hanging back or staying hidden, um, even though there's obviously flies crawling around and other frogs are eating, um, it could be an indicator that those frogs are being bullied when you're not seeing it or it could be a sign um, that that frog is sick or suffering from some kind of illness um, why it doesn't want to come out and eat and in terms of breeding powder blues um, it's going to be pretty easy uh, they'll typically breed pretty readily if you've housed them and cared for them as i've outlined in this guide here um, and you have a mature male female pair um, they should just start producing eggs on their own uh, you don't really need to do anything special for them. Just provide them a good habitat and the right temperature and humidity and keep them well fed and uh, they should just start laying eggs. So you can provide a petri dish or a similar dish under a coconut hut and they will nine times out of ten lay on that dish. Um, you also don't necessarily need the cocoa hut. Um, sometimes simply putting the dish in a dark kind of covered over area is enough to get them to lay on the dish. Um, I've had success sometimes just placing the dishes under a large leaf or kind of an angled piece of cork bark. In this vivarium here, I don't have any cocoa huts. I just place uh, a dish in each of the back corners and uh, kind of the overhanging foam background there uh, provides kind of a dark sheltered spot that's covered over and uh, they use these dishes in the corners here pretty much every time even without the huts. Although I will find the odd clutch in this vivarium uh, laid right on the surface of a leaf. And I'd say most of the clutches are about 8 to 10 eggs, um, but I've had anywhere as low as 4 eggs in a clutch uh, to as many as 13. And uh, they take about 2 weeks to hatch, and then the tadpoles take about 2 to 3 months uh, to develop and crawl onto land. And then from there, yeah, it's about 10 to 12 months to sexual maturity and uh, the cycle can start over again. All right, that's gonna do it for the powder blue species profile. Uh, hopefully you learned a few things there. And if you enjoyed this video, please consider liking and sharing and subscribe to the channel if you wanna see more content like this. And if you're wondering how you can get some powder blues for yourself, um, if you're within Canada, I can ship frogs uh, pretty much Canada wide. If you missed my last video, I will be at the Calgary Reptile Expo next month, uh, May 25th and 26th. And I will have a bunch of these guys for sale. So come on out if you can, uh, stop by the booth and say hi, I'd uh, love to see you guys there. Uh, but that's going to do it for this video, so until next time, happy frogging.